side, and you do that, the other side gets dirty. You start on the other side, the other side gets dirty. The only way to do it is the peacock gets up, gives us a shake, and it gets clean. The only way that we can fight off what's coming our way, what's being shown to us in our faces, what's so easy to get to, is by being chazik ourselves and who we are and what we represent. Because otherwise, we're not going to get anywhere. And we have to remember, we're living in a generation of so much tumor. That means, and the Sephardim HaKadosh should bring this, I'll tell you, listen to this, Rabbi Yisai. There's a Shem Ishmael, Sarat Shabbat Rebbe. The Shem Ishmael writes an unbelievable thing. Rabbi Yisai, listen to this. He says, there are two ways of becoming a tzaddik. There are two ways of becoming a tzaddik. There's the hard way, and there's the easy way. The hard way is sitting and learning every day, and, and doing mitzvahs, and not doing averas, and sitting for years and years and years, and eventually you become a tzaddik. That's the hard way. But he says there's a shortcut. So the Heilige Shem Shmiel, there's a shortcut to become an instant tzaddik in the Rabboni Shalom's eyes. How? If you're faced with an inappropriate site that you shouldn't be looking at, or the opportunity to type one in, and you don't, you automatically, at that moment, become a tzaddik in the Rabboni Yisraelim's eyes. That's the shortcut to become a tzaddik in Hashem's eyes. The Chazal tell us in Mesech Tz Derech Eretz, Perek Aleph, Kol Aroya Dova Erva Ve'ina Zonas Eina Vemenu Zoycha Mekabu Pnei Eshchina. This is something we haven't mentioned, but often when we're walking on the street, we see something that we shouldn't be seeing, that we don't want to see. The first look, by the way, is not our fault. The fact that we saw it, that's not us. The fact that we continue to look, or look again, that's us. Zuk chazal in Mesechtas Derech Eretz. When a person sees a Dover Erva, and he turns away, and he says no, and he says, I'm not giving in to this temptation. I don't want to look. I don't want to see this. I don't want to get any hanor from it. Zuk chazal zoycha mekabel pnei ha-shechina. Do you know what that means? That's unbelievable. He zoycha to, meka- to, to be mekabel the shechina. How many people I've heard personally from, personally heard this from. Guys that are working on Shmir Senayim, Shmir Sabres, all the other, Inyone Kedusha Inyonim, that we're discussing over here, they're working on it and they manage to prevent themselves and stop themselves for an extended period of time. Obviously each one is different, whatever it is, we make tailor-made things for each person. But he said to me, and I've heard it from numerous people, not one, I feel like I'm steiging. I feel that it's easy for me to get closer to Hashem. And the answer is poshant. Yes, our neshama is pure and will always remain pure, whatever we do. But the layers that we peel off when we stop ourselves, the layers that we peel off when we prevent ourselves is very important. The Orchaz Chaim the Rosh, one of the Rishonim, the Rosh brings down, and again, I'm going to quote to the Rosh of the Orchaz Chaim, Be'egiya He says that when a person comes to Tfila, and we're about to have a mincha in a few minutes, and like we always say, we'll be discussing Yoni Tefillah. There isn't a person in this room and there isn't a person who's davening Mincha today that doesn't need something from Hashem. Everyone needs something. We all need something. Whether it's Shaduchim, whether it's Parnassah, whether it's Avas HaToyah, whether it's good relationships, whether it's health, whether, whatever it may be, we all need something. And we all want the Rabbi Shem to answer us. Zuk the Rosh, or Chaim the Rosh, that when a person is careful what he watches, his tefillahs get answered. And it's posh because we've spoken about so many times that when a person doesn't watch what he, what he sees, then automatically they, they cause all sorts of things in Shemayim for him. We don't realize the benefits in the next world, but also in this world. And this one is simple. Every person here wants to have a good marriage. Every person here wants to have an amazing relationship with their wife, both in the physical and the emotional. Okay? That's claw. That's Okay, there's no such thing as anyone that's not interested in having a good physical relationship with his wife, just to speak it very clear and blunt, okay? Imagine when a person goes into the Yechud room. He's been engaged for months. He's been at Shoima, it doesn't touch her, nowhere near. He's so excited for the moment of the Yechud room, and of course we're not going to discuss it, but Per Mole, because we talked about it in the speech room, that we don't have to discuss things that we all know. But the Yechud room is a very, very important time. Imagine, Hassan goes into the Yechud room. They close the door, they lock the lock, and he runs over to the corner to get his phone to see who sent him a message during the chuppah because he couldn't during the chuppah check his text messages. And he wants to see him. His wife is standing there like, really? 
Now, it sounds crazy. Nobody here would do that, right? But don't worry, Rabbi. <laughs> don't worry about me. I'm good. You don't have to worry. By the way, the Bochum that normally say that, you know, when I start chosen classes in the Bochum, like, Rebbe, leave it to me. I'm good. Those are Bochum generally that have the issues later on. But let's not get into that. What I'm trying to tell you is, if you want to have, and you could do it now, and it's never too late, if you want to have a great relationship with your wife, both in the physical and even in the emotional as well, this is important to work on. This is important to work on because if you don't work on this, it's gefelach. I spoke to a lady recently when I was in America who told me that she once walked in to her husband who was deeply involved in pornography on the laptop in front of him. Now, a woman who's married to a man and she sees that, that is one of the worst things ever. And that's a, bre- a, bro- a, a breach of trust that is very hard to build back. Very hard. I'm not saying impossible. Everything's possible. But it's very hard. They actually got divorced because of that. But it's very hard to build that back. Now, Rabbi Say, I'm not telling you that you're going to be perfect and you have to be perfect by the time you get married or you can't get married. Of course you can. But you need to be working on it. You need to be aware of it. It needs to be something that you control yourself, not it controls you. Because otherwise, the marriage is going to suffer. Because at the end of the day, and again, I don't have to give anyone the details here, but we all know this. The woman at the other end of that screen that you're watching didn't have to wake up in the middle of the night for the baby, didn't have to clean the house before Shabbos, didn't have to go shopping and schlep the bags back, didn't have to cook lunch, whatever it may be. She just gets dressed up on the screen and gets paid for what she does and looks wow and everyone's like, this is amazing. Well, guess what? I don't want to break this to you, but that's not going to be your wife. And if that's what you're expecting, if that's what, even if it's subconscious, by the way, many guys are, no, no, I, I know, of course I know that. Everyone knows that. I don't expect that from my wife, but subconsciously, by the way, they do. And when they do, and it doesn't happen in the bedroom, I'm sorry for being so blunt, my boy say. And it doesn't happen in the bedroom the way they saw it on the screen. Subconsciously, they're upset. They feel deprived and they feel they're not getting the attention from their wives. And that's a big problem. And that leads to huge issues. My boy say, one of the greatest things that you could do right now is just try and work on it. And again, we have a lot to discuss. We have a lot to go through. We have eights. We have situations. There's a lot to discuss, Rabbi Isai. And the Mitzvah Shem will get there. But let's just start with that idea. First of all, to understand the great benefits you have in your tefillah, the great benefits you have in the connection to the Rabbi Nishlam in this world, and the great benefits you have with your own marriage. And it's never too late. I've told this to married people also in the same way. It can be worked on. It can be rectified. We don't need to be perfect. The Rabbi Nishlam does not does not want perfection from any of us. Never. Rav Hashim does not want us to be perfect. He wants us just to try. Just to be on that train in the right direction. And as long as we're trying, he loves us, he cares for us, he always loves us, he always cares for us. But he sees that we're trying. And he gives that the extra siyat and the extra koyach. Mitzvah Shem, next week, we shall continue.